Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be doing a try on haul. So I did a little bit of shopping this week. I don't know what's wrong with me. I ended up at Sephora for the Sephora sale and I got the big bag, which I never get. And I also went to Ulta and got some things too. So, you know, it's funny because sometimes I'm totally bored with what's out there when it comes to makeup and I really don't feel like shopping. And then there's other times when there's so many things I wanna try. And that was this week. So I'm gonna try on as many things as I possibly can. Some of it is like skin skincare and stuff like that that I can't try on, but I'll just show it to you guys and kind of give you a little peek at what's new and all of that. So if that sounds good, be sure to stick around. If you enjoy unsponsored makeup content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay, so starting on the Ulta side, I did get a primer. It's another mineral SPF. I told you guys I'm gonna be trying a lot of these this summer because I really wanna figure out which ones are the absolute best. So this is from Live Tinted. It has good reviews online, so I'm hoping that it's gonna be good. And this is their HueGuard 3-in-1 Mineral Sunscreen Moisturizer and Primer. So it's kind of like an all-in-one sort of deal. It didn't have shades, so it's just, I guess, this one color. And and I'll just show you what the packaging looks like really quick. It comes in this orange tube and it says it's an all-in-one daily non-nano zinc mineral sunscreen. And also, like I said before, a moisturizer and a primer. And it has broad spectrum UVA, UVB coverage and it's SPF 30. I kind of wish it was 50, but I feel like a lot of the mineral sunscreens just don't have the higher SPF numbers that the chemical ones do, unfortunately. But if you're somebody who is sensitive to chemical sunscreens, you know, mineral is kind of the way to go. Although I will say like I do react to most chemical sunscreens in the US, but definitely try the Korean ones. And I'll be sure to talk about those here on my channel as well, like as we head into the summer, because those don't bother me, even though they're chemical filters. So they're definitely using some newer ones that I think cause less irritation. I'm just gonna pump out a little bit of this on my hand. So this is what the color looks like. It is slightly tinted, hopefully so it doesn't give that white cast. And also on the packaging, it says that it's an ultra lightweight, fast absorbing formula that blends seamlessly into your skin, giving it a natural glow with no white cast in italic and bold, making it perfect for all skin tones and types. It's also fragrance free, it's vegan, reef safe, all of that. And oh my gosh, it does feel really nice. It's super lightweight, very silky, feels like a moisturizer. There's no weird thick and chalky type of feeling like a lot of mineral sunscreens tend to have. And absolutely zero white cast. This is going on beautifully. And it almost does have that little bit of like a smoothing primer like effect, which is so nice. And I'm also applying a lot of this. You have to make sure that you apply a ton of sunscreen to get the SPF number that's listed on the packaging. But for as much as I put on, it doesn't feel greasy or sticky. I do have dry skin though, so keep that in mind. My skin tends to kind of suck up everything really well. But yeah, it basically feels like a moisturizer. It did give my skin a little bit of a glowy finish, which is nice. And I don't think it's overly sticky and it's not too dewy like some that I've tried. So I feel like it's not gonna melt my makeup off in the summer. If I had to compare it to something, it would probably be the Hero Mineral Sunscreen that I talked about last summer. I still really love that one too. It has a similar consistency. Next, another thing that I got from Ulta, you guys are gonna laugh at me, but this is the Tante Dole Ultra Wear Stick Foundation from Lancome. And you're gonna say, wait a minute, didn't you just buy that a couple of weeks ago? Yes, I did. I was putting it on in the bathroom the other day and like, you know, I was standing there at the sink. My son came in to talk to me about something as I was putting it on and I had the stick in my hand. I don't know if you know where this is going, but as he was talking to me, then I was responding and I was using my hands like this and I had just put hand cream on. My hands were a little bit slippery and the stick flew out of my hand right into the toilet. Like I couldn't have gotten that shot if I tried, but it just kind of flung this direction really randomly and plopped right in there. And I had to fish it out. Obviously there was nothing in the toilet, but still I'm not gonna use it after that. And it's not like I can return it to Ulta and be like, hey, this got toilet water on it. Can I get a new one? And what sucks the most about this is that it's like a $60 
stick foundation. But you know what? I had Ulta points. I do have the Ulta MasterCard. So when I'm buying things just in everyday life, I'm constantly racking up points. And I did happen to have over $60 in points. I think it was 63. So I figured, you know what? I'll just get this again for free. Plus I had a coupon that they had sent over, which was awesome. So I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth this on. If you didn't see my video on this, I absolutely love it. It has the silkiest, thinnest formula of any stick foundation I've ever tried. And having dry, more mature skin, I'm 46, you know, having that skin type, usually stick foundations are just too drying, too like thick and heavy and cakey looking. And this just blends like silk. As soon as you put it on, it melts right in and it's a super thin lightweight texture. And I know I'm gonna love this just heading into the summer cause it's a really quick, super easy way to just put on foundation and go. And by the way, I didn't even show it to you guys. I have it in the shade 260 Bisque, which is a neutral undertone. So here's what the packaging looks like. And there's a swatch on the back of my hand. I think it's a pretty good match for me. It's really, really close. And it also does have um, a brush on the other side, but I don't like this because it's just too stiff and I feel like it doesn't blend super well. So I just use my fingers. But yeah, I love this. It has such a flawless finish. It just really looks like skin and it doesn't have that thick makeup-y look that most cream formulas have. So it's absolutely beautiful. Definitely worth the money, even though it is really pricey. And while I'm talking, I just wanna quickly put on some lip oil. I also got this at Ulta and this is from Winky Lux and it's their Barely There Tinted Lip Oil. So this is what the packaging looks like. I think it only comes in two colors. So there's not a big range for this. I have it in the shade Luscious, which looks like a really hot pink in the tube, but on my hand, like see how sheer it is? It's really not that dark. So I'm just gonna quickly put a little bit of this on and see what the formula is like. Oh, wow. This is so nice. It's one of those really um, silky lip oils that feels like cushiony when you touch your lips together. It's not sticky. It doesn't feel like a gloss. It's like a liquid lip balm. If you've ever tried the lip oils from Beauty Pie or um, the Givenchy Rose Perfecto liquid lip balms, it feels like that. It, it's a really nice, like very high end feeling formula. Wow, this is good. And it smells fantastic. It's like a vanilla cupcake kind of scent. Ooh, this is so nice i'm gonna have to kind of let it sit for a little bit and see how i feel about it but i love the slight bit of tint that it has and a little bit of shine it just feels so comfortable this is great all right then when it comes to sephora i know i have an eyeshadow palette in here that i want to try and by the way they didn't need to give me this huge bag i think they just didn't have any bags left in the size that i needed that's why i got it um, i didn't get that many things so um, yes, the eyeshadow palette that I got is the Dior Backstage Eye Palette in Smoky Essentials. So when I did my huge long Sephora video that was two hours long a couple of weeks ago, I had talked about how I haven't really tried that many products from Dior and I did get one, I think there was one person in particular that had told me about this palette multiple times and also a few others were mentioning it. So I thought it might be something to check out. It's a nine shade eyeshadow palette and it looks really pretty. It's like basic neutrals, but I haven't tried their eyeshadow formula in ages. So I'm really curious to see what the formula is like with this one. I just want to quickly swatch it for you guys and we can see what the colors look like. All right. So here we have the swatches. I feel like the shades that are along the top here are a little bit more of a satiny finish. They're really, really beautiful. And then we have some of the deeper smokier mattes down on the bottom. So I'll have to figure out what colors I wanna to use today. Let me see. I think I'm gonna start with this shade right here, which is a satin shade called Soft Rose. And I'm picking this up on the BK Beauty A503. I'm just gonna start working that back and forth in my crease. So far the formula feels really soft and silky, really blendable. I also just realized I forgot to put eyeshadow primer on, but it seems to be gripping to my skin pretty well, so that's good. Next, I'm just gonna deepen the crease a little bit with this matte shade down here called Mauve or Mauve. And I'm just gonna put this one in my natural crease, which is a little bit lower. So usually I put my transition color up a little higher. So this one I'm just gonna put down closer to my lid. 
I really like the tones in here. It's reminding me of an eyeshadow palette that I had back in the 90s. I remember wearing a color really similar to this on my eyes back then. All right, I'm just gonna take that bigger, fluffier brush and just blend the edges of this one out a little bit. Next, I'm just gonna deepen up my outer corner with this matte shade called Deep Plum. I'm just gonna use the tiniest little bit of this because it does seem like it's really pigmented. I don't wanna to apply too much. I'm really just gonna focus it right in this outer V. I mean, so far, everything seems to be applying and blending really nicely. I'm not the best blender in the world, so if things look patchy or not smooth, it's probably me and not the eyeshadow because if I compare this to other eyeshadows that I've tried, I feel like it's pretty easy to work with. All right, next I'm gonna pick up the shade beige right here in the center, and this is a shimmer finish. And I'm just gonna pat this one on the inner corner of my eye and just bring it a little bit back toward the center just to brighten things up a little bit. I feel like we're getting very, very deep and smoky. And even though this one says that it's a shimmer finish, it's not overly shimmery. It's actually kind of a little bit more of a satiny finish or maybe more what would have been called a shimmer back in the day. Now I feel like shimmer shades people think of kind of more of a metallic sheen, a little bit more foiled. This is a very classic soft shimmer shade. So yeah, overall, I just tried to use some colors that would kind of coordinate with what I'm wearing. Just your everyday basic mauve -y, smoky eye. I tried to lighten it up a little bit with the ivory shade, but I think everything performed really well so far. So, so far so good. All right, bouncing back to Ulta really quick, I got the ColourPop Level Up Lengthening Mascara. So months ago, I saw this on TikTok. It was kind of blowing up. Everybody was using it and getting these crazy long lashes. Like, I mean, they looked insanely long and I really wanted to try it, but every time I went to Ulta, it was sold out probably because it was on TikTok. But this time they actually did have it in stock. They only had two, but I got one anyway to try. So I'm super curious about this one because it does have a ton of hype. I haven't really read any reviews online. I just saw it in store and grabbed it immediately. So I hope I don't regret this. Um, but this is what the brush looks like. It's actually kind of a skinnier wand, which I like and it has more of a cone shape. It's the natural fiber bristles versus the plasticky or silicone ones. All right, so here goes nothing. Let's see, I haven't tried a ColourPop mascara in forever. I've been using tubing formulas lately because I just love how easily they remove. So far, this formula feels a little bit on the drier side and it's also a little bit thick. I'm hoping that it's not clumpy. It feels a little bit heavy too. So I don't know if this is the type of formula that's gonna hold a curl very well. But yeah, as I'm building coats, it is getting a little bit clumpier. I'm not noticing a ton of length, maybe just a little bit. The more I build, the clumpier it's getting. So I'm just gonna leave it at this point. But I mean, it did definitely make my lashes look bigger. And it's definitely not a wet formula. Like I said, it feels like it's already dry. So it dries super fast, which I like. But am I getting like the crazy long lashes like the girls in the TikTok videos? No, I would say it's performing about average for me. I would say it's giving me a good mix of length and volume, even though it says it's a lengthening formula. All right, so here's what my lashes look like all finished. I do think, like I said, it gave me a lot of length and volume, not more than any other mascara though. And I'm a little worried about the heaviness of this kind of weighing my lashes down. I don't know if it's gonna smudge or not. I'll have to pin a comment down below and just let you guys know how some of these things wore throughout the day. Right now, at least, I feel like it's a decent mascara, but I don't really see what all the hype is about. Like I'm not jumping up and down. It's not the best mascara I've ever tried. So I guess we'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, next, I did get some new blushes. I got the new Juvia's Place blush lighters. So I have the originals. I really like them a lot. These are supposed to have a little bit of a glow. And I also got a blush, or I guess it's like a multi-stick from Live Tinted. So I don't know which one I wanna use. I guess I'll have to just swatch them and see which color goes best with like what I'm wearing right now. So let's start with the Juvia's Place. I got two different ones. I got Blush Lily, which is kind of like a purple and then Rosy Posy Glow. So these actually have the exact same shade names as the original ones do. And I'm pretty sure that I have these two colors in the original formula, but they're so pretty. I had to get them in the glowy version too. So I'm just gonna quickly swatch these. All right, so we have Rosy Posy up here, which is a little bit more of a peachy pink. And then Blush Lily is a cooler tone pink down on the bottom. They definitely seem like they have a bit of sheen to them as well. I'm just gonna blend these out on my hand so you can see how much 
rich glow they actually have. So this is the type of blush that when you put it on, you definitely don't need to add highlighter. It's a two in one type of thing. So these look really beautiful. The only thing is I don't know if these colors are gonna really go with what I'm wearing today. So we'll have to see, but let's check out this Live Tinted Multi Stick and then I'll kind of make my final decision. So this is in the shade Balance and this can be used on eyes, cheeks and lips. So this is what the packaging looks like. It's actually a metal tube. It's really nice and heavy. It feels very luxurious. And I think the stick is a really nice size. It's not too chunky. So if you do wanna use it on your eyes and lips, it should be pretty easy. This also says that it has a soft matte finish and it's supposed to be hydrating with squalane, vitamin C and E and hyaluronic acid. So here's what the color looks like right here. This is really pretty and I kind of feel like this one might go the best with the look that I have on today. So I'm just gonna swipe a little bit of this on my cheek and then I'm gonna take the Profusion round tapered brush and just start blending this out. It's blending really nicely and it doesn't feel sticky at all. It's actually like a cream to powder formula. It dries right down. It's nice that you can use it all over your face too. It seems like a really versatile product. Ooh, and my cheek feels so soft where I put it. It almost has a little bit of a blurring type of a finish. So that's awesome if you have a little bit more texture on your cheeks, this isn't gonna exaggerate that. In fact, it seems to kind of be minimizing my texture a little. That is really pretty. I like that a lot. Just gonna do the other side. I also think that this builds upon itself well. I just did the two coats over there and I felt like when I did the second coat, it didn't lift up the one underneath and it doesn't seem to be bothering my foundation or disturbing it either. So I really like this so far. So again, this is the shade Balance. It's just a really pretty kind of dusty pink. The only criticism I have, I guess, would be with the packaging. This does not go down, like you can't twist it down. So you have to be careful when you're putting the cap back on that you don't like nick the top off of this. Next up, I have a ton of lip products to try from both Sephora and Ulta. So I figured I'll just try them all on my lips and we'll see what they look like. First up, I got another shade of the Anastasia Satin Lipstick. So you might remember me talking about that again in my big Sephora video that I did. And I love the one I have so much. I have the shade Rose Dream. So I got another color in the shade Dusty Rose. So I just wanna show you what that looks like. I love the packaging of these. It's very Charlotte Tilbury-esque. It's kind of a rose gold metal packaging. It looks really pretty, but I just love this formula. It is so comfortable. It has a little bit of like a satiny shine to it. So here's what the shade Dusty Rose looks like. It's a gorgeous cool tone pink. All right, so let's see what this looks like. By the way, that Winky Lux lip oil made my lips feel so smooth and soft. I'm really loving that so far. So this is like the perfect your lips but better color. It's so gorgeous, really, really creamy feeling formula. So if you have drier lips and you feel like bullet lipsticks can sometimes look a little dry or accentuate or exaggerate the lines in your lips, that's why I love these because they just look so smooth. So here's Dusty Rose. Next up from Sephora, I got one of these new YSL Love Shine lipsticks and I have the shade Blush Mellow. So I don't know if these are actually new. I thought I heard somebody saying they were like just reformulated or relaunched or something. I don't know, but either way, I've never tried this formula before. So here's a look at the packaging. Again, this is the shade Blushed Mellow and super heavy, very, very luxurious packaging. I love it. And then here's what the Blushed Mellow shade looks like. It's a gorgeous pink with a bit of a purple undertone and it seems like it's a really glossy formula almost like balmy texture and it has a little bit of a fruity scent not my favorite to be honest by the way the Anastasia lipstick didn't have a fragrance but despite not loving the scent this is so silky really really lightweight it basically feels like a tinted lip balm it's so pretty I also love the color, this is gorgeous. So again, here's the shade Blushed Mellow. Also, I've been talking about the K-Skin lip balms in so many videos now. These are an SPF 25, so I love that you get that sun protection for the summertime. I had to get it in another color. So the original one that I had is Nude Ting, which is a beautiful, just everyday nude, and I love that one. So the new color that I got is called Eerie Rose, and I actually wanted to get, there's like a coral shade too that looks so nice, but they were out of stock. I might order it on the website. I just love this formula so much. 
swatch. So I'll show you what this color looks like. Actually, I can swatch it next to the other one in case you haven't seen that one yet. So the packaging on these has that really nice rubber tip that's really comfortable to apply. And then over here we have the Erie Rose shade, which I just bought. And this is Nude Ting, which is the one that I've had for a while. You can see just like how shiny and glossy these are, but they're super hydrating like a lip balm. They're not sticky at all. So I just wanna quickly try on the new Rose shade and see what it looks like. The shade is really pretty. It's subtle. It's just a little bit of a pinky rose color, by the way, these also have the most incredible brown sugar smell. It's gonna make you wanna lick your lips and just eat it off, but it smells absolutely fantastic. And these are like 15 bucks, so they're actually pretty reasonable for a brand at Sephora. Definitely check them out if you've been looking for an SPF lip balm. They're just some of my favorites. So again, here is Eerie Rose. Also, I feel like I don't have to clip my hair back anymore since we're just trying on lip products anyway. Um, so the next thing I got is from Westman Atelier. It's their Lip Suede Matte Lipstick. So here's what the packaging looks like. I wasn't sure about this because it's a matte formula and I don't normally love matte lipsticks, but I do really like the products that I've tried from her line. And it's said on the website that these are a non-drying matte formula. They're supposed to be really um, hydrating. So. Here's a look at the packaging. This is like probably the heaviest lipstick I've ever felt. Oh my goodness, like this packaging is just kind of over the top, but it's got the magnetic cap. And then let's see what the color looks like. All right, so the color that I got is Jerev. I think that's how you say it. It's French, I'm guessing. It looks beautiful on the website, so we'll see what it looks like on. I'll just show you a swatch really quick. Ooh, as I'm putting this on, Wow, okay, that feels really smooth. I mean, for a matte lipstick, I have high hopes. It looks like a really blurring type of formula. Really, really soft. It was just effortless to put on. I don't know if I can even show you guys, like if you'd be able to tell on camera, but you hardly have to touch the lipstick to your skin and it's like instant pigment. That is really nice. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see how it applies. It doesn't seem to have a scent at least that I can detect, maybe something really faint, like vanilla or something. Okay, so this feels kind of like the ColourPop Ultra Blotted Lip type of formula where it's just like, it's not moussey because it's not a liquid lipstick, but if a moussey lipstick was in bullet form, it feels like that. It goes on very silky. It does feel hydrating. My lips are not feeling dry at the moment. Definitely gives a soft wash of color. This is actually beautiful. I definitely took a risk because this was so expensive, but I've been wanting to find a matte lipstick that doesn't feel and look dry on my lips. And this might be it. I mean, unfortunately it is super expensive, but if I was gonna get one of these, 20% off is definitely the time to do it. I'm actually very impressed with this right now. I think it looks so pretty. So here's the color again. Next, I got a couple of lip products at Ulta. I got these new lip serums from Bobbi Brown. These are called the Extra Plump Lip Serums. So here's a look at the packaging. I don't think these are supposed to be like a burning or stinging type of plumping formula. I think they're just supposed to be more hydrating, but I've loved every lip product I've tried from Bobbi Brown so far. So on the top here, we have Bare Plum, and then this one is Bare Rose. So they're supposed to be just like a really sheer wash of color. They're not supposed to be super pigmented. I'll just show you some quick swatches on the back of my hand and then we'll do lip swatches. Okay, so here's Bare Plum up here, which has a little bit more color and then Bare Rose is really sheer. That one's almost clear, but I think it'll show up a little bit. All right, so let's do Bare Rose first. These have kind of like a citrus scent. It almost smells like an orange maybe. I actually like it. And they have that super smooth, silky feel, similar to um, the Winky Luxe lip oil that I just used in the beginning. They feel really nice. All right, so here's the shade Bare Rose. And then we have Bare Plum. This one kind of sort of reminds me of Clinique's Black Honey just a little.
These are just really thin, super comfortable, not an ounce of stickiness at all. So they feel really nice on your lips. I really like them. They kind of feel like a lighter version of the crushed oil lip glosses that she has. The last two lip products I wanted to try are from Morphe and these are called Drip Glass. So there's two different versions. There's one that's like a full pigment gloss and then one that's more of a sheer gloss. So here's what the packaging looks like. I haven't tried anything from Morphe in a while. So I'm hoping that these are good. So the first one is glazed. So this is the one that's a little bit more sheer and it's in the shade Shatterproof Mauve. So this is what the shade looks like. And according to the packaging, it says that this has semi-sheer color and glass-like shine and it's infused with squalane and vitamin E and it's supposed to be non-sticky. So, I mean, for a semi-sheer gloss, it does seem to have quite a bit of pigment. I wonder what the pigmented one's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna put this one on and see. It has kind of a weird scent. It's a little bit medicinal. To me, it smells a little bit like cough medicine, so not really my favorite scent, but it's not super strong either. This color is really beautiful though, and it does have a nice amount of shine and quite a bit of pigmentation. So again, this one is Shatterproof Mauve. Okay, then the next one is called Mauve Splash or Mauve Splash, and this one is the drenched version. So this is supposed to be like really high coverage, full pigment. So here's what this color looks like. This one's on the top, and then the one on the bottom is the one that I swatched before. So this is the full pigment one, and it says it's supposed to be a nourishing formula with cocoa butter, vitamin E, chia, and olive oils, and it's supposed to instantly coat your lips in intensely pigmented color, again, with a non-sticky finish. So we'll see what this one looks like. I mean, it's definitely like one coat full coverage. This one also has the kind of weird medicinal scent. Not loving it, but anyway, here's the shade Mauve Splash. They actually seem like a really nice formula. And if I had to compare these to, let's say the new Huda Beauty lip glosses that came out recently, those I felt like when I pressed my lips together, I was getting the weird strings. They were a little like too thick and chunky. These actually sit so much more nicely on your lips and they're just really smooth and they add a nice amount of shine in one coat. The Huda Beauty ones, I felt like I had to keep layering them up over and over. And then once you do that, they get too thick and too goopy and they were getting all over my teeth. But with this, I feel like I didn't have to do that. Just one coat and my lips are covered. They look nice and glossy, so. I actually think these are pretty good. If we can get past the smell, they're a beautiful, more full coverage lip gloss at an affordable price. So I feel like so far so good. Then just quickly, I got a couple more things that aren't makeup related, so I can't really try them on, but I just wanted to share them. I got a new Too Faced Fluff and Hold Brow Wax. So this is my fourth tube now. I figured I should grab another one because my other one's almost gone and I might as well get the 20% off while I can because I know I'm gonna keep using it. So this is my absolute favorite brow product. It just holds my brows so well without making them stiff or crunchy. They really stay all day. And I just love the consistency of the wax because it's not like a gooey wax that doesn't have hold, but it's also, like I said, it just doesn't dry out and make my brows look stiff. It really gives you that nice fluffy look. So I love this. I'll just keep repurchasing it as long as they make it. I also got the new eye cream from Summer Friday. So this is their Jet Lag Overnight Eye Serum. This says it's supposed to be super hydrating with glycerin, ceramides, and a gentle retinoid blend to help minimize fine lines under your eyes. And I saw this on Allie Glein's Instagram stories and she was saying that it's amazing. It sounded like she's had really good results with it so far. So I just wanna show you what the texture looks like. So even though it says that it's a serum, it feels kind of more like an eye cream. It's actually pretty thick, but it feels like it's gonna be really, really nourishing. So I definitely need that. I have really dry under eyes and especially if it has retinol in it, I want that added moisture. I'm really excited to try that. I also got the new Laneige Bouncy and Firm Sleeping Mask. So this also looks so good. It sounds amazing. So it comes in a really cute pink jar. I really like the packaging. And then inside the product is very kind of light and fluffy. It has more of a whipped texture and it has these tiny little 
like white micro beads in it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see them on camera, but this basically claims to plump your skin overnight. So they say like you put it on in the morning, your skin's supposed to look like more bouncy and firm and plump and also with a little bit of a glow. It feels really nice. It has, um, like I said, kind of that whipped, almost like moussey texture going on. It does feel pretty lightweight, but at the same time, deeply nourishing. So I'm excited to try this out. I'll have to let you guys know. I've heard good things about it so far, but we'll definitely have to see how it wears and if it's enough moisture for my dry skin. That's always a concern, especially when something feels like it's a little bit of a thinner texture. So I will keep you guys updated. All right, guys, so that's everything that I got. I had so much fun trying on all of these different products and just sharing them with you guys. I'd love to hear if you got any of these during the Sephora sale or if you've picked up any of the stuff at Ulta. I'd love to hear your thoughts and personal reviews on the products as well. It helps everybody out so much down in the comments. And I also want to thank you so much for clicking on this video and taking the time to watch it. I truly appreciate it. If you have some extra time and you want to watch another video, I'll just put something right up here for you to check out next. Thanks guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all in my next one. Take care. Bye.